but hopefully she'll get Thanks, Ryan. Hopefully she will uh, get to do it in person. Well, it'll be. And did Bobby O'Toole make it on? I'm sorry, go ahead, Judy, say hello. I was gonna say, in person is much easier. Did Bobby O'Toole make it on? I'd like to just let people see Bobby's face because Bobby, I'll introduce her tomorrow night, but no, Tuesday night. I don't yeah, see maybe. Bobby. I okay. Know. Well, when you see the name Bobby O'Toole pop on your screen, um, she's our parliamentarian. Ryan, you can, I only see Judy now. And I'm sure we all are. <laughs> oh, no, we don't have to do that. <laughs> oh, no, did I say that? All right. Well, I just wanted you to all know that grace abounds from now until next Sunday. We are in our first time through this kind of thing. And you're going to have, well, you might not, but you're, it's very likely you'll have some kind of technical glitch. Like I'm a procrastinator. So I waited until last night to register. Then when I went to look at my agenda, I was told if I go into optional events on my dashboard, I'm learning all these new words, if I would go into the optional events on the left-hand side of my dashboard, there would be all of the New York conference things as optional events, and there weren't any. So I sent a help message to the help desk in at the Synod, and I said, help, I need somebody. Help, not just anybody. I hope it's you. And I got this, uh, and then I sent one to Ryan too, but then I got this really cool email back this morning. Thank you so much for starting my day with a smile. And uh, I, I told the, I said, dear helper, it's probably because these things take some time to populate. Another word that I've used that, um, that I don't have this yet, but if that's not true, will you please be sure I do? And she sent back, yeah, we were doing some, some late night work last night and it wasn't, it wasn't populating and it should all be there now. And sure enough, it was. So if you just have patience and grace and know that we're not gonna leave anyone behind, um, we'll get through this together. Um, I want you also to know that the chat is your friend for the next few days. Chat is down at the bottom of your screen. There's a little thing that says chat. And if you click on it, you'll be able to write a message. You can write it to everyone or you can choose one person to write it to. And that we're going to have, instead of speak outs this week, we're gonna have chat outs. So we will be putting announcements and things we wanna say into the chat. So please try to find chat sometime soon so that you can chat when we want to. And you're also going to need to be able to get to your email to vote. But Ryan's gonna to talk to you about that. And I think that's enough of introduction for right now because I'm going to do a formal welcome in a few minutes. So Ryan, would you like to talk about the e-ballot and voting software? Yeah. Hey, everyone. So yes, thank you. Yes, I, I, it's a good reminder, Donna, that grace does indeed abound. It should be sprinkled throughout all of our ones and zeros and quirks and everything that we do on the computer. Um, in fact, actually, uh, as, as we were working even just now, I've been working on the e-balloting voting software and have in the midst found a glitch with that as well. So I am I am deeply apologetic that uh, we will have to test that in another way. I was not able to get everybody's email. I tested it with um, the board this weekend and it worked okay with a great question of ontological concern around uh, the Reverend Dr. Marshall Williams football team choice. Um, so my hope is that we would have a, 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 an e-question tonight as well, um, but I cannot do that at the current moment. I am having struggles uh, struggles with the balloting software. So as we continue to go through things, my hope is that by the end of the meeting, we will have that up and about. But I will just tell you that uh, at this current moment, I can't do that. 
Um, I have just in the midst of things uh, been updating the website as well. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen just so people can see if they need. Feel free to go to um, the annual back to the New York conference page and backslash annual meeting events backslash annual meeting. I'm starting to put up things here as well, including an agenda if you need one as well. So I just want to make sure to put that there. Um, I know there were some questions today and literally we've been working on the agenda even until this current moment. So um, again, grace abounds. Thank you very much. I did also just want to say that the standing rules, most of you got an email from me today, this morning, uh, with the standing rules as an attachment in PDF. Um, they're also online as well. So we're going to be uh, we're going to be talking about those, but again, hopefully by the end of the meeting, we'll be able to accept those in a formal way with e-balloting. I wanted to just describe why we're using e-balloting, um, mainly because people might say, well, I've used Zoom enough that we should be using the Zoom polling function. And that is a great idea and it's a good concept except for the moments when we need to have votes only for delegates, we will be having rooms uh, like we have right now with people that may or may not be delegates from their church and we welcome people. We also might be having um, a couple or two partners that are sitting in a room uh, that have one computer, but two votes and it's tough for us to account for those. So in this fashion, e-balloting seemed to be the best that we could do at this moment. It's not perfect, but at the same point, it will get to our place where we will be able to vote the conscience and the will of the New York conference. Um, so I just say all those things and uh, I apologize deeply that the e-balloting is not working. I've been testing it and working with it and it worked just fine just a little bit ago and now it's uh, not so much, but again, we will, we will get through this with just the sprinkling of grace in all that we do and say. So. Um, I will give it back to Donna here. Um, it, I will put some links as well in the chat if you need um, any of those standing links um, and you'll see me at the end as well, okay? So just know that even if you don't see my picture, I'm still here. I just might change my video so you don't see me pulling out my hair. Have a great day. I think we have to accept the standing rules with a vote, so... Okay. That we will do at the end, or as soon as you, you can come back on, well, no, don't just interrupt us. Um, you can come back on at the end or send a chat when the balloting is up and we'll, um, we'll find the right spot, okay? Although you are going to transition us to worship at the end, so um, perhaps if the balloting is up at that point, that's when we do it. The standing rules document you received, the approval of the agenda, you do not need to absorb that agenda with all the little things on it. All you need to approve is that we're going to meet today, tomorrow, we have the three plenaries, and then the other things are optional. That's the agenda that we're approving. That also is a vote. So we'll wait until the end. We're gonna carry on today and wait until the end of this meeting. And like Ryan said, Grace. But right now, Barb Wright is waiting to hear that it's okay for her to declare a quorum or not. So Barb, you'll have to unmute yourself. And... Yep, here I am. Um, truthfully, I looked again at the bylaws for the conference. There is no uh, statement as to what constitutes a quorum for meetings of the conference. So. We have a quorum, I guess. Well, um, actual attendance figures will be included in the minutes broken down by clergy, delegates, visitors, lay people. I don't have those figures yet. Well, did Bobby O'Toole make it on yet? We'll just be sure that that's, that we're good. And on we go. I'm here. Hi, Bobby. That's Bobby O'Toole, our parliamentarian. And Barb said she checked the bylaws for the voting for the quorum, and there isn't anything really specific. So, well, just... that'll, it'll default to uh, Robert's rules then. If there's nothing specific in the uh, bylaws, it'll default. Okay. And we, we can't take the vote now anyway, so. 
<laughs> we'll give you a minute to check Robert's rules, if you would. And when, when it comes time to vote, we'll see if the if we have enough for the default. Okay. Yeah, sure. All righty. Thanks, Bobby. Welcome. I am going to do a little official welcome at this point. I had a, a little note in my chat that everybody doesn't know me. What? No, I'm, I'm kidding. I am Donna Roll and I am the moderator of this conference, which means I sit as the chair of the board as well. I've learned so much in this job, you would not believe it. And it's not all to do with technology. I, do, I see my mirror of the screen in my glasses. I apologize for that. But um, it's been a joy to serve in this and I'm headed into my final year. So this is gonna be great fun this year. As we begin our meeting officially, I would like to bless the land from the native people upon which we sit. We are gathered collectively throughout New York State on the unceded land of the Haudenosaunee Conference Confederacy, consisting of the Mohawk, Onondaga, Oneida, Cayuga, and Seneca nations. Some of us are gathered on the unceded land of the Shinnecock, Tuscarora, and Tonawanda Band of Senecas. I ask you to join me in acknowledging all of these communities, their elders, both past and present, and all future generations. The New York Conference of the United Church of Christ and its member churches also acknowledge that we were founded upon exclusions and erasures of many indigenous peoples, including those on whose land our churches and homes are located. This acknowledgement demonstrates our commitment to beginning the process of working to dismantle the ongoing legacies of settler colonialism. I began our conference board meeting with that yesterday. I would encourage all of you to find something like that. to Begin your association meetings. You can take it as small or as large as you'd like in terms of you could, you could do it in your churches or do it in your churches from time to time. Just acknowledge that there were people here before our churches. And welcome. And I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad I'm here. And I'm looking forward to having a wonderful week together. At this time, I'm going to introduce David Gajewski, who is our conference minister. And he's going to carry on for the next little bit. Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to see you. It's good to see so many folks here. Welcome to our annual meeting, our virtual annual meeting. Um, and again, I will repeat that please allow grace to abound as none of us have ever done this before and we are, we are learning as we go. Um, we have several uh, greetings that are uh, pre-recorded that we would like to share with you. And if Ryan is ready, we're going to begin with uh, greetings from Reverend uh, Peter Cook who is the director of the New York State Council of Churches. Hold on just a minute. My name is Peter Cook, and as executive director, I bring you greetings from Christ Jesus from New York State Council of Churches. Founded in the late 19th century, the council embraces the social gospel, which inspires us to address societal sin in the form of structural injustice, which can disparage poor people and the disenfranchised. Embracing the social principles of our partner denominations, 
We are committed to the ecumenical ideal that it is better to work together rather than separately to address the injustices of our time. The last 18 months have been monumentally tragic given the COVID-19 pandemic. So many lives were lost in New York paired with terrible economic losses while billionaires made unprecedented profits. The council with our partners sought to offer guidance to congregations on closing and then regathering coupled with promotion of public policy solutions to reverse the economic damage. As congregations regather, we strongly support vaccination and seek to counter through public education and advocacy, dangerous vaccine hesitancy. In many communities in New York, vaccination rates are still much too low. All of our denominational partners have heavily engaged in anti-racism work for many years now. While approaches may vary from one denomination to another, the council strongly urges all engaged in anti-racism work to actively advocate for public policies which eliminate structural racial injustice. Our struggle to be anti-racist certainly requires self-examination and reflection on both an individual and a denominational level. But becoming anti-racist also requires us to advocate actively for policy reforms which dismantle structural racism. As a council, we encourage our denominations to identify these structural injustices and offer concrete guidance on what congregations can do to act to pass laws and policies which reverse these injustices. Discipleship requires that we must work at the local, state, and federal level to counter wealth inequality, redlining, credit deserts, gentrification, and not in my backyard opposition to zoning changes while advocating for massive investment in affordable rental housing and also affordable owner occupied housing. We must take a bottom up rather than a neoliberal trickle down approach to economics and dramatically widen access to childcare and healthcare while making a quality public education available to all. As we work towards a clean energy future, we must also counter environmental racism and we must also take active steps to disrupt the fashionable tough on crime narrative, which aims to re reverse progressive criminal justice policies, which are helping to ease the burden of mass incarceration. Making it easier to vote by countering voter suppression laws in both New York and also throughout the country is also essential. We invite you to look at our legislative and policy review on our website at www.nyscoc.org. And when you come to our site, you can also sign up for our listserv to learn how you can encourage your congregants to act on their faith in the public square. Many of our congregations and their quest to survive counterproductively turn inward by seeking to give first priority to their own members. While it may seem counterintuitive, it's better to remember that our members are everyone in our neighborhood and region, whether they ever end up coming to our church or not. When we do excellent ministry in the community without favor, we live into our gospel values and our survival begins to take care of itself. One specific way in which we help congregations become less 
preoccupied with themselves and serve their communities is to give them tools to evaluate their mission and explore how they can better use their property to serve, including constructing affordable housing. The council working with the Interfaith Affordable Housing Collaborative, Bricks and Mortals, and the Interfaith Assembly on Homelessness and Housing uses a six phase pre-development process, which helps congregations access pre-development funding to evaluate their property so that they are in a better position to enter into a non-exploitive relationship with an affordable housing developer. Our work is in part funded by a grant from Trinity Church Wall Street for New York City based congregations, but the council also works with the Attorney General of New York, denominations and other entities to assist congregations with pre-development in every part of New York State. A major feature of our work is to ensure that we have well-qualified chaplains who can offer the gospel of hope in prisons run by the Department of Corrections and Community Supervision, and also in state mental health facilities and facilities for children and youth. In order to be a Protestant chaplain in these settings, you must be certified by the New York State Council of Churches. In the state, especially in our state prison system, we have an acute shortage of chaplains. So if you or someone you know is a fully ordained clergy person with a Master of Divinity, pastoral experience, and clinical pastoral education, please be in contact with us. We also support all chaplains with visitation to prisons and other state facilities and through our annual conference, which will be held this coming October in Owego, New York. The New York State Council of Churches is also committed to countering violations of human rights and religious freedom in many places around the world. More specifically, the Council joins over 100 faith-based organizations in urging the passage of H.R. 2590, the Palestinian Children and Families Act, to counter grievous human rights violations of the Palestinian people by the Israeli government. Drawing on teachings from Hebrew scripture, we support the responsibility of Israel to do justice to the stranger in their own land. Mistreatment of Palestinians and denial of their full rights and access to land, incarceration of children and youth, and other injustices are simply inconsistent with both Jewish and Christian teachings. The Council also cooperates closely with the Church of South India and the Church of North India, which is comprised of four of the eight partner denominations of the New York State Council of Churches to advocate for religious freedom and human rights in India. We work closely with the Federation of Indian American Christian Organizations in North America along with the Interfaith India Working Group and the Roundtable of International Religious Freedom to raise awareness about the rampant increase in human rights and religious freedom violations in India. At present, we are also joining with our partners to advise United States residents and indeed residents in many other countries on how they can best make charitable contributions to aid people in India who are suffering from this pandemic. We thank all of our denominational partners for their support, and we look forward to our continued work with all of you as we offer the gospel of hope in a broken world.
Thank you, Peter. The next person who will be bringing greetings to us is the Reverend Jonathan Lee, who is the philanthropic officer of the United Church of Christ Pension Boards. Greetings from the Pension Board's offices here in New York City. I'm Jonathan Lee, the Philanthropy Officer, and I have had the privilege over the past year or so to work with a terrific group of folks from the Penn West Conference on the Caring for Churches, Caring for Clergy campaign, which benefits the conference's mission grants program, as well as the assistance and leadership programs of the pension boards that serve pastors in the Penn West Conference. We are off and running, and I'm here in part to say thank you. So, <laughs> welcome Penn West Conference to, no, <laughs> clearly we have a glitch. Um, we will find Jonathan's message to the New York Conference, and we will be able to present that to you either tomorrow or on Wednesday. Um, next, we are going to invite the Reverend Dr. Volker Jung, who is the president of the, and here I'm going to use my German, uh, he is the president of the Evangelische Kirche in Hessen und Nassau. And this is our EKHN partnership in Frankfurt and Wiesbaden, Germany. And if you would like to uh, learn more about our partnership, we will be having a, uh, an open lunchtime next Saturday with, a, and this will be a live conversation with uh, our friends from Germany. And we will be talking about uh, some of the highlights of our nearly 15 years of partnership with the EKHN. So everyone is invited to attend the luncheon meeting next Saturday with the EKHN. Honorable Conference Minister, dear David, dear sisters and brothers in Christ, thank you very much for the invitation and the opportunity to greet you at your annual meeting. For 14 years, our church has been linked by a partnership which, despite the distance, lives an exchange which has gained in intensity in recent months. The mutual visits and the regular youth exchanges are an enrichment for all involved. We were deeply moved by the shocking pictures and your personal reports of the consequences of the pandemic and the political riots. We were very much concerned about the traumatic situations in the clinics and the racist riots. We have accompanied you in our thoughts and prayers. In the virtual encounters via Zoom, you have allowed us to share your concerns, your grief and your hope. These have been months that have demanded a great deal of most people and have shown limits. The pandemic has shown us how vulnerable we are. It, was, it has painfully exposed fragile living conditions and social injustices on both sides of the Atlantic, in metropolitan cities like Frankfurt or New York. This was very clearly visible and tangible. Currently, a cautious turn towards a new normality is noticeable. Now we must think about how the church can provide support and orientation in a changed reality and keep spaces of hope and confidence open. One such space of hope was, was the ecumenical church convention where we would have liked to welcome you to Frankfurt. Like your annual meeting, now the encounters took place virtually 
and gave courage to celebrate together God's love, which is meant for all people. Our churches are facing great challenges. How will we succeed in strengthening and uplifting people when lifestyles and working environments are changing and fixed structures are disappearing? How will we succeed in bringing people together again after more than a year when meetings that strengthen the community were not possible? What this means for the young generation, for the elderly, and what the consequences for all this will be, we can only guess now. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Jesus promised his disciples. Out of this trust, I'm grateful today that despite everything, it has always been possible to create rays of hope. I am grateful for the digital ecumenical encounters, the Zoom services across time zones and language barriers, where we have shared prayers, songs, and stories of hope are a great gift. You, the UCC New York Conference, are an important part of this. I wish you God's blessings for your deliberations and encounters at the annual meeting. I wish you to be a blessing to the people with whom you are on the way. May God grant you his spirit of strength, love, and prudence. Thank you, Dr. Jung. Next, we have uh, greetings from our other partners in Germany from the Berlin Deanery, Evangelische Kirchenkreis Berlin Stadtmit. And you will be seeing uh, greetings from the Dean uh, Bertold Hooker and the Vice Dean Silke Radosh Hinder. Brian? Dear friends, dear siblings in Christ from the United Church of Christ New York Conference, to your General Synod, we are sending our warmest greetings and blessings for all your meetings, talks, negotiations, prayers and encounters from the Protestant Church of Berlin, capital of Germany. Be sure, we miss you. We have learned to live with the feeling over the last 18 months, but still feel the lack of real person encounters. We feel them very deeply. While we are beginning to come back to a new reality, still insecure and worried about the new pandemic developments, we feel the many losses so those months have brought. We mourn and pray to God in our own sadness and helplessness. We also see the many attempts in all the congregations to continue with an ever bigger responsibility for elder people or young people who have missed out on so much. We are grateful for all that and thank God for strength, empowerment and love. We have seen in those months how deeply we are connected Despite our missing, we have seen the world as one and we are all interconnected with one another, which comes with great, great responsibility, but even more hope and togetherness for our shared struggle for world injustice and peace. Our partnership, our friendship, our shared memories and deep community prayers for one another have meant more than words can say during those long days of lockdown. We pray for you, for the future of the United Church of Christ, for your struggles for justice, for peace, for love and against racism, hate, and for the environment. We pray for you, for good decisions, for power and encouragement, 
for the great voice of the UCC being heard and practiced inside and outside of the churches. We pray for your ministers and for young congregations. We pray for our partnership. We pray to our God for love, for peace, for justice, and the blessing we need more than anything. Amen. And we can't, can't wait, wait to, to see, see you again, again when we come to visit you next year after Easter. We can't wait to see you again also, Berthold and Silke. Wonderful people, wonderful friends from Berlin. I'm going to turn it over to Donna Roll at this time. Well, if you are not watching the chat box, lots is happening over there. And don't worry if you're not, because we have other people watching it and they will bring you up to date. But one of the things I need to say so that it's on the recording is that Heather Moody, in the spirit of great grace, um, let us know in the chat that the people of Poughkeepsie are living on the unceded lands of the Lenape, the Wappinger, the Muncie, the Mohican, and other Algonquin speaking people. If you know the specifics of your unceded territory, and I didn't cover it, please let me know in the chat. Oh, I just hit some button and you all went away. I hope I didn't go away. All right, there you are. Now, if you have been to other annual meetings, you have experienced what's called a speak out. Typically, there's a microphone and people line up in a long queue because they have an announcement that they think is really important. Well, oh, I'm sorry, an announcement that's really important or something that they'd like to, to bring to the attention of the group. This year in our virtual setting, what we're going to call them instead of speak outs is chat outs, meaning figure out how to get into the chat box. And if you have an announcement, it can go into the chat box. We're going to give you several minutes right now so that you can be typing and reading the chats. Um, it's only 410 or almost 410 and we, you know, like, like typical, we're moving right along. We also, the other announcement from the chat box is that we do have a quorum because a quorum is, is constituted of um, a majority of the people who are registered as delegates constitutes a quorum. All righty, so I would like you to start chatting. And I don't know if, if we're up to having some music in the background or not, Ryan, but take a few minutes and chat and uh, we'll call you back. Donna, do you want me to sing? Oh, sure, Melva, go for it. We don't want Melva to sing. <laughs> We love you, Melba. <laughs>
Is there anyone right now who's frustrated that you cannot get into the chat and you want to? Just raise your hand because Ryan can look at the big screen and see. Yeah, some nice, some nice messages going out there. And what happens to the, all the chats at the end of the meeting, Ryan? Do you get those too? Yeah, we'll get them as a as a form, uh, and we'll make a. I'll put them in a fold, or you know, I'll put them in a file. So. Alrighty. Okay. Well, you can just keep chatting away. I I would like to say that we're going to use the Google poll function to accept the standing rules and to accept the agenda. And we can do that after we do see the Amistad decommissioning video, which is up next. Um, as an introduction to that, I'd like you to know that the liturgy that we used for this ceremony was adapted from the United Church of Canada and licensed under Creative Commons opens with a call to work. Oh, I'm sorry, period. It opens with a call to worship and a statement of purpose by Pat and Joffrey Black, who were the force and vision behind the acquisition and the first inhabitants of the space. Then you will hear a litany of thanksgiving by our current staff, sharing of memories by many people around the conference, and now some who have moved away. There are some um, photographs that people sent in that we've used. There's a little video that goes with that. Then we pray to make these memories holy, and we close fittingly with David and Suli Gajewski, the final inhabitants, if you will, with a moving on in faith and commissioning segment. I'd like to um, give special thanks to all of the participants and contributors, to Barb Wright, who helped us plan this tribute, to Judy Van Kennen, who took the reins on this project and saw it through, and especially to Mary Larson, who took all of the pieces that were sent in and wove them together into the video that you are about to see. Full disclosure, I cried the first time I watched it. God, whose creative glory we see in the rushing wind and the swirling waters. And whose love is revealed in the smile of a child will remain with us. God, whom we have discovered in the scriptures and who has discovered us. And who comes to us in Jesus and in the lives of the saints will remain with us. God, whom we encounter in the worship and service of our many faith communities whose spirit is within the mission and vision of this conference, will remain with us. God, gracefully known in the hard places of our journey together. And who laughs and celebrates joyfully with us here today, will remain with us. God, who will be with us as we release this sacred space. Who is with us in time and beyond time, will remain with us. Let us give thanks to our loving God and faithful God. We are gathered today to release the Amistad Center, which has been the home of the many ministries of the New York Conference of the United Church of Christ since 2006. And as we do so, we are reminded that buildings are tools of ministry and mission. So we give thanks to God that we have been given this tool but we also give thanks to God for the mission and ministry, which has evolved and changed over time and now requires new tools of us. We release the Amistad Center as a gift of the past as we enter into a new future together as the New York Conference. The many meetings that have taken place over the years, meetings of the conference board of directors, the Global Ministry Commission, the Commission on Ecumenism and Interfaith Relations, the 
Mission on Ministry, the Oneida Committee on Ministry, the Oneida Executive Committee, and the many, many staff meetings. Loving God, we give you thanks. For the many students and instructors who have gathered for NISOM classes and practicum sessions, some around the tables and some joining from screens, for knowledge shared, for skills honed, for transformative conversations and deepening faith. Loving God, we give you thanks. For the many meetings and Brazilian cheese bread, for computers, screens, servers, printers, and data clouds, for stopping and showing German partners what Syracuse looks like, for dreams dreamed, for actions made, for offices and files who represent people and churches, for patience, for kindness, for living justice and walking humbly. Together, loving God, we give you thanks. For the many opportunities to gather for training and workshops, for cornhole games in the basement, and for the occasional nap on that wonderful massage chair. Loving God, for this we give thanks. When it comes to the Amistad Center, as one of the last to be brought on to the uh, New York Conference team, I am grateful for the spirit and warmth that I felt the very first time I ever walked into the building, which was during the interview for this job. I'm grateful for the company that it holds as we had our staff meetings, and I'm grateful for the work home that it gave my colleagues for so many years to help construct the team that we are today. Beyond that, I'm also grateful that the Amistad Center had ample parking, and the fact that it was also oh close to the good wetness and the Chipotle. Loving God, we give you thanks. We come together with so many good and treasured memories, along with many, many meetings, which always included a delightful lunch. I cherish my memories of celebrations that were held at the Amistad Center. As leadership transitioned, old friends moved on. New friends came on board. We also joined together with great hope for continuing our shared ministries of the New York Conference in new and different ways. For the life and ministry of the New York Conference, which will continue on. Loving God, we give you thanks. My name is Bob Welcher. I'm from the Bayberry Church in the Liverpool, Syracuse area. And Donna Rose asked us to give some remembrances of the Amistad building. And this is one little story that I remember really, really well. It happened in about the year 2000, 21 years ago, when we just bought the building. Many members of my church and many others, for example, Claire Price from Binghamton, were ripping out old carpeting and making other improvements. In our newly acquired building, I was working with P.V. George. He was a very gentle, soft-spoken, and kind pastor of Fairmont Community Church. We looked into the office assigned to Jeffrey Black, conference minister. The contra contractors were in the process of installing an elevator. This new equipment necessitated the use of quite a few square feet of Jeffrey's new office. When I expressed my concerns about this, PV in his quiet way said, that's okay. He won't be in his office too often. And he had no intention of being funny when he said that he was downright serious. <laughs> and I always got a kick out of that. Another thing I remember really well, I was a new member of the Commission on the Global Church. And we had our in-person meetings. Boy, don't we miss our in-person meetings. 
and we had a large group of people, a lot of people from the metropolitan New York City area, uh, people of all different backgrounds, and the camaraderie was wonderful. I really missed that time, especially concerning you know, the fact that we have Zoom meetings now, and we can't even hug each other or say hello in the way we really like to. But those meetings were very special to me, and I'm still on that committee, and we're all working very hard. Hello, I'm Corrine Pym. I'm a member of Churchville United Church of Christ, 15 miles west of Rochester, in case people don't know where Churchville is. I remember well the nine years of meetings I attended as a member of the conference personnel committee with such a wonderful staff headed by Joffrey Black. It was a nice change from walking up all those stairs in the former office. I'm not sure how many years we met in that old office before the new building was purchased. At the dedication, Betty Kretsch sang, bless this house. We had a wonderful lunch in the building with the German delegation before they returned back home after staying in our individual homes following the annual meeting. It makes me a little sad to think of selling the building since I was in on when we first purchased it and Joffrey was so happy to have found it for sale buying it from the Red Cross. Thank you. 
you are beloved and known. Join us and work out the kingdom. We welcome you home. Join us and work out the kingdom. We welcome you home. Would you pray with me? Loving God, we offer our memories so dear to our hearts. We offer you the memories that we have heard. We offer you the memories that we keep deep within ourselves. As you have blessed us in the listening and in the telling, so you will bless us as we bring them to mind and share them in the coming days. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who told wonderful stories and shared his experience with his disciples. Amen. When the chosen people left the land of Egypt for the uncertainty of the wilderness. You, O oh God, went with them. You inspired and directed Moses and the people to the promised land. You will be with us now as we move on. When the prophets knew for certain that the old values and traditions would no longer serve your purpose, nor bring closer your realm. You, O oh God, showed the doubters a new day and revealed fresh opportunities to the closed-minded. Ever faithful God, you will be with us as we move on. When Jesus realized that the trusted structures and traditions could no longer serve your purpose, and Jesus knew it was time for a change. You, O oh God, were at the heart of his ministry, and you sustained him all the way to the cross. When we move on to fresh ways to conduct the work of the conference, not bound by geography, but led by your spirit. With you, O oh God, we move forward boldly to welcome all, love all, and seek justice for all. God remains with us though we let go of our cherished place. God remain, remains with us. Though we meet together and do the work of the conference in new ways. God remains with us. God's justice will inspire us. God's realm will continue to call us to action. God is eternally for us and with us. Thanks be to God. Hi, I'm Gary Ferner, the Associate Conference Minister for Search and Call for the New York Conference of the United Church of Christ. And I've been asked to assist in taking down our Amistad Center sign and offering some prayers as we decommission our building. So please join me in a prayer. Loving God, we lift up our prayers today, our prayers of gratitude for the individuals and the congregations that contributed to the purchase and the maintenance of the Amistad Center. We also give thanks for the blessings that you have poured into this building and the ministries that flowed from those blessings. And now we ask that you bless the proceeds from the sale of this building, that they might provide enduring resources for the ministries of the New York Conference of the United Church of Christ. And finally, we ask that you equip us as a conference to share the full meaning of the word Amistad, friendship, Untethered from any one place, especially this place, may we be generous, may our love and friendship be unconditional, and may we share it extravagantly.
and let the people of the New York Conference join me in saying, Amen. Thank you, everyone who had a part in putting together that remembrance video of the Amistad Center. Thank you to all who worked to make that, that vision of that period of the life of the conference a reality. You will hear more tomorrow. Uh, no, Tuesday night. You will hear more Tuesday about the um, the proceeds from the sale. The good news is that uh, the building is under contract. Uh, there are some uh, some zoning issues that we're working at ironing out. Um, and the conference board is is very pleased to have received the full asking price of the sale. We expect that the sale will be finalized uh, sometime in the early fall. And now we have another video that uh, we're going to share from the Reverend Dr. Tracy Blackman, who is the Associate General Minister of the United Church of Christ. Ryan? Hello, 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 New York Conference. My name is Tracy Blackman, and I am proud to serve as your Associate General Minister of Justice and Local Church Ministries. What an honor it is to join you virtually as you meet as a conference for this 33rd General Senate. I just wanted to stop by to say thank you. Thank you for the ways that you have collaborated and supported the work of the national setting. Thank you for showing up when we call. Thank you for engaging in programs and platforms that have been offered. Thank you for contributing 10% of your OCWM dollars to the support of the national setting. Without you, we would not be able to do the work that is before us. And because of you, all things are possible. I hope you enjoy this special edition General Senate I am certainly looking forward to all that it will bring and all of the new ways we might imagine working together. God bless and see you soon. And I'll turn it over to Donna Roll. Uh, there we go. Okay. We are at a place now where we're going to try the Zoom polling function to vote because Ryan has been frantically talking with the people in Cleveland to see if he can get our, our voting thing up. <clears throat> it is important that you know that we do have a quorum. And the two things that we're going to vote on now are an acceptance of the standing rules for this meeting, which are just like the standing rules every other meeting, except that uh, we adjusted them at the, at the board meeting yesterday to reflect the fact that we are in an electronic setting and not in a, in a live setting. So we need a, it's coming from committee to accept these or from the counts, from the board. So if we could have someone please make a motion that we accept the standing rules. We do not need a second, but we can have conversation if there is any. You put your conversation in the chat would be nice. So moved. And please name and church. Uh, Reverend Phil Hobson, Mount Sinai Congregational Church. Thank you. And that is a reminder for me to tell all of you, when you get a chance to speak, would you please identify who you are? Just like Phil just did. All righty. I second. Okay, thank you. Is there any conversation around these standing rules? Any questions anyone has? I'm trying to get down to my new message in the chat. It's two new messages. Oh, yeah, Ryan just put up the, the links. But, hmm. 
there's not much difference. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, Ryan, how do we do this? How do we vote? Okay, so if you're looking at your screen, in just a moment, I'm gonna launch the poll. You're gonna see your screen. You're gonna see the opportunity to uh, vote. Uh, the two questions are, I accept the standing rules of the annual meeting 2021, yes or no. And I accept the agenda of the annual meeting 2022, 2021, yes or no. So you should see that there. I can tell you that right now we have 100% um, acceptance of the agenda and we have an 82% or 63 votes um, for the standing rules. So we have no against. Um, and I'm assuming that the rest of the 20% for the standing rules, excuse me, 78% excuse me, 16% uh, that are not voting would be an, abs an abstention vote. Bobby, is that correct to assume? Uh, yes. Hey, and of course it's possible that some people just didn't click the right buttons. Yep. So. Yeah. So we do have 100% voting yes to accept the agenda of the annual meeting, Donna. And we have a 82% yes to accept the standing rules of the annual meeting. Carried. I'm going to end the poll. Boom. That was really simple, Ryan. <laughs> that polling thing. And thank you all because you're just, we're just going with the flow here. Lovely. Okay. That is our official first plenary. Be sure you use the chat. The chat is your friend. The next time you log into meet ucc.meet.ucc.org, go over to the left side of your, what do we call that? Hub. Dashboard. Yeah. Right? The left side of your dashboard to optional events and click on optional events and all of our plenaries will come up with their links. So you don't have to be uh, going into your emails. Now there was, an, there's another um, announcement from the Community Church of the Pelhams. If you, did, if you don't have access to chat right now, the Community Church of the Pelhams sits on lands gained from the Siwanoi people first by the Dutch and then later by the English in a convoluted and probably misunderstood land grant transaction between Native Americans and colonists that was inherently unfair. We feel honored to meet where countless generations of brave men and women had their home before us. Thank you, Noel, for sending that in too. We thought we had it covered. So thank you for the grace and for um, sharing what you know. The permission, the procedure for obtaining permission from the meeting moderator speak to an issue. Is it that quick link, Ryan? No. You put it in the request box like now. Then log in, no. Okay, that's different. Ryan. I, I believe we said uh, to answer Martha's question, what is the procedure for obtaining permission from the meeting moderator to speak to an issue. And I believe, Donna, would that go to chat to you and then you would make the call from there? Yes. Okay. So Martha, if you got that one, if you wanted to speak to something, uh, either today or at another plenary, you would put that in the chat. And at which point you would be acknowledged by um, either Judy or Donna who are leading the meeting at that moment. Does it, is that clear? Is that correct? Yes, and um, 
it's clarified in those standing rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we're gonna do, if, if it's an issue and we wanna do the pro con thing, like we do the microphones at other uh, meetings, there's a, a yes microphone and a no microphone and an issue like that. Then there's a time and then we call it after a certain amount of time, that kind of thing. Thank you, Martha, for asking that. And just review the, the standing rules and you'll see how that works in this meeting as a, in an electronic meeting as opposed to. I just, I just wanted to speak for just a moment that um, I did put a quick link to the UCC Meet Hub for those who all have registration credentials from UCC, you just go ahead and click that directly and it should give you the access to be able to uh, click for the worship service. I would also say, yeah, worship begins in just a little bit of time, but if you are a person um, for the brief amount of time, if you wanted to stay here and we wanted to have discussions around technology, just know that I'm not going anywhere. I'll stay right here and we can have discussions and work on stuff together. And if you need more, um, realizing that the grace abounds and is sprinkled throughout when we talk to one another through technology. So um, just saying that out loud. So now talk to us about transition to worship. To yep. opening so, worship. so if you have that link um, that's in the chat right now, which is the quick link to the UCC Meet Hub, you go ahead and click that. Um, and then from there, you will leave this meeting. You will go to the website. Would you like me to show it? Is that is that easier for everybody to get? Yes, because there might be someone who doesn't do the chat. Absolutely. Okay. I'll just show you my screen real quick. Okay. Oh, uh, no, let me just, hold on. Stop screen. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> Okay, so here's my browser. I just clicked the link um, in the chat, which is meet.ucc. You'll see it at the top in my browser, at which point you will be at this screen here. Um, my login, I'm gonna give everybody my password. Actually, I'm gonna log in for Chanel because I wanna give everybody her password. No, I'm just kidding. I'll go ahead and this is just my credentials. You don't see those. But then from there, you're gonna log in. Um, from there, uh, you're going to be able to access. It's just that click. It's just that that ease. So when the event starts, it will be on that screen. So for those of you who have that, that will also be available on demand after the fact, but it will be live coming up here in just a little bit and worship materials will be there as well. So service, other things there. So I know that sounds pretty simple and easy and in regards, it really is. So um, fear not. Um, as long as you click that link, it'll take you directly there. Oh, I should probably, yeah, I should probably mute myself when I'm typing, huh? You're hearing click, 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 click. I was typing a thank you or a welcome to, oh, there's Chanel. <laughs> you can never log in. You don't know my password, huh? Okay. I was just offering a welcome to the people who came in a little later and I didn't see you at the opening of the meeting. Welcome, we'll see you later. And I hope you enjoy our opening worship. Thank you all. Reverend Ryan, yes. I have a quick question for you. Yes, uh, how are I, you? Tried to I tried to chat directly with Reverend Dr. Marsha, but uh, I don't know, maybe she didn't see the chat. But anyway, I in the um, the schedule on meet.ucc for uh, the New York Conference annual meeting, it indicates that Kiss the Ground uh, movie showing and discussion is on Friday. I thought we had agreed that it was Thursday. Since okay. I have to host it, I need to know. <laughs> okay. Will you tell me, I was under the understanding we were talking that Thursday was a meeting for you that you needed to be to. So we shifted it to Friday, but if you're- Yeah, but Friday, there's a keynote address. Um, uh, and so I can do what I said no. to Reverend Dr. Marsha, the, what? We changed it. Ryan just missed the email. Oh, okay. You told Marsha, oh. Marsha sent out an email that said, yes, Heather adjusted her schedule so that we okay. could do it on Thursday. 
So yeah, we need to just fix that. Ryan, I have another agenda I want to send to you. Okay. Yeah. That has on it, and then you can just switch them out. Thanks, Heather. No um, and but what time can you do it? Is is it a little later? Well, I, basically the movie's about an hour, as I recall. And so if you started at six thirty, that's fine. I'm just going to finish my board of trustees meeting okay. and then come and lead the discussion at around 7.20 or so, provided I don't need a, a bio break. <laughs> okay. <laughs> take a bio break if you need it. I'll just say that out loud. Grace, about, you know, take bio yeah. breaks. So, yeah. yeah, take, take okay. your bio break. We have plenty of people who like to talk. Okay, so, so Reverend Heather, I'll also send you, um, I have a kiss the ground pamphlet they sent, a PDF about shopping pieces with carbon neutral stuff. So I will, I'll forward you. That was out from the movie people, so. Um, to get permission for this, we went ahead and so I'll just tell you that I have that handout if you wanted it as well. Oh, sure, why not? Uh, Send it to me. Yep. Fabulous. Okay. Fabulous. All right. Okay. Thanks, and I will it. I'll keep just just for technological sake, I'll keep the same link. I'll just change it in the background. So the link will still be the same. Um, and I'll just move it around. But Don, if you send that to me, I'll I'll forward it and I will contact the folks um, at Meet UCC and be able to get that changed as well. So what do I do first now? Oh, Mary, how are you? I'm waiting to. Absolutely, Mary. First. <laughs>